In 1732, English newspapers reported on a vampire epidemic across Europe. These reports were recorded and compiled by Austrian officials after taking control of northern Serbia in 1718. Officials noted the local practice of exhuming bodies and killing vampires. Vampiric creatures have been prominent figures in folklore in many cultures across the world, from the Chupacabra in South America to the Strigoi in Romania. In popular culture today, the most famous vampire of them all is Count Dracula, who stalks the surroundings of his sinister Transylvanian castle by night, ready to sink his pointed teeth into the neck of his unfortunate victims and drink their blood. The fictional Dracula was based on the accounts of vampires, the undead, who rise from their graves at night to suck the blood of the living as they lie asleep, which was a common story spread throughout Central and Eastern Europe throughout the 18th century. It was widely believed that sorcerers, suicides, murderers, and those who had been bitten by vampires all turned into vampires after death. In some areas, this was supposed to extend to anyone who died in the unclean days between Christmas and Epiphany, when evil ruled the earth. Great care was taken to guard the unburied corpse, for vampires could also be created if a cat jumped over the body, or even if the shadow of a living man fell across it. The word vampire was only introduced in the English language at the beginning of the 18th century, as constant reports of the creature's grisly work arrived from Hungary, Moravia, Poland and Silesia. Many papers were written on the subject and John Heinrich Zopfius in 1733 gave a classic description. Vampires issue forth from their graves in the night, attack people sleeping quietly in their beds, suck out all their blood from their bodies and destroy them. They beset men, women and children alike, sparing neither age nor sex. Those who are under the fatal malignity of their influence complain of suffocation and a total deficiency of spirits, after which they soon expire. Vampires were supposed to cast no shadow and were not reflected in mirrors. So long as they kept out of sunlight and away from looking glasses, there was no way to tell a vampire from a man though they were supposed to have deathly pale skin and full red lips. Their bodies were gaunt and emancipated, except when they had just drunk their fill of blood, when they became plump and bloated. In Bulgaria, they were said to have only one nostril. In Poland, their tongues ended in a sharp point. Vampires could only be detected for certain once the grave was opened up because the body would be uncorrupted, the eyes open, the cheeks pink and the chest full of fresh blood. The accepted method of disposing of the dread creature was driving a wooden stake through the heart. This would be made up of aspen, the wood supposedly used for Christ's cross, or whitethorn, which was said to have made up the crown of thorns. It was fear of vampires that led to the custom of suicides being buried at crossroads with a stake through their hearts. This practice was so prevalent that it was made illegal in England in 1824. In 1727, a high-powered delegation was sent from Belgrade to the Yugoslavian village of Madojna to investigate a vampire reign of terror. Several people reported that Arnold Powell, a young man who had died in a farming accident some weeks before, was roaming the village at night. Those who saw him took to their beds, pale and lethargic, and some had already died. In the History of Magic in 1854, Enemosa describes the scene when Powell's grave was opened 10 weeks after his burial. It was seen that the corpse had moved to one side, the jaws gaped wide open, and the blue lips were moist with new blood, which had trickled in a thin stream from a corner of the mouth. All unafraid, the old sexton caught the body and twisted it straight. So, he cried, you have not wiped your mouth since last night's work. The vampire looked indeed as though he had not been dead a day. On handling the corpse, the scarf skin came off, and below that were new skin and new nails. Garlic was scattered over the body, and a white thorn stake driven through his heart, at which Powell let out a fearsome shriek. Four of his victims were also disinterred and rendered harmless. 
A few years later, there was another outbreak of vampirism in the same area, and this time, all of the graves in the cemetery were opened. A report by reputable officials and surgeons dated 1732 recorded a whole list of apparent vampires, including a woman who had been buried for 100 days and was looking fitter and plumper than in real life. A 20-year-old woman buried for three months, whose body showed no sign of decay, and whose loose skin came off her hands and feet to show fresh new skin and nails, and a 10-year-old girl whose body, when pierced with a stake, poured out warm blood. Today, although we might think we are free from such superstitions, we still have our vampires. They are psychotic killers who crave the taste of blood. Lorry driver Peter Curtin, the monster of Dusseldorf, was sentenced to death in April 1931 after terrorising the area for years, strangling his victims and cutting their throats. I need blood, as others need alcohol, he said. John George Hay, tried in 1949, killed nine people, always slitting their throats and drinking a glass of their blood. Both were convinced that they had done nothing wrong.